Overall, this generation of GPUs has been disappointing due to the high prices or the low performance improvements over last gen. AMD's Navi 33 die provides a unique opportunity to dive into and understand why RDNA 3 has been so disappointing. After testing at the same clock speeds with last generation's RDNA 2, does the RDNA 3 architecture provide any benefit? Let's get into it. I recently tested the RDNA 3 architecture with the Navi 33 die in the RX 7600 for its power scaling and efficiency, and then I also compared it against last generation's RDNA 2 GPU in the RX 6600 XT. While that provided answers to understanding AMD's claims of 50% performance per watt, it left me with a lot of unanswered questions about the benefits of the RDNA 3 architecture. What I really wanted to understand is how much of a performance benefit did the RDNA 3 architecture really provide over RDNA 2? Now my concerns for RDNA 3 started a few days before the launch of the 7600 when I released a video that assessed the latest rumors and I had a huge concern. Back then, I said, the first red flag is why did AMD not include the XT? Why is this GPU not the 7600 XT? Why is it just the 7600? The only reason would be the performance improvement will not compare well with the 6600 XT, and they want reviewers to compare it to the nerfed 6600 non-XT. And that concern, unfortunately, was shown to be true. Hardware and box showed that at 1080p, the 7600 is 24% faster than the 6600. But if you compare it to the 6600 XT, it is only 10% faster. To be clear, comparing 32 RDNA 3 compute units in the 7600 to the 32 RDNA 2 compute units in the 6600 XT, and it is only a 10% increase in performance. And six weeks after the launch of the 7600, AMD Germany listed on their webpage the 7600 as the 7600 XT. Seems AMD may originally intend it on naming it an XT. For me, the release of the 7600 was more disappointing than the release of the 7900 GPUs. With those GPUs, AMD hyped it up so much and then under-delivered. And people speculated that the not-so-impressive 35% uplift of the new flagship versus the previous flagship was likely due to the new and innovative chiplet architecture. Others pointed to issues with the new drivers, while some suggested there was a defect in the silicon. Well, in the six months of time between these launches, this smaller RDNA 3-based GPU would have none of those drawbacks. Since the 7600 does not use chiplets, RDNA 3 drivers have had six months of development to mature, and if there was a silicon defect, then it could have been fixed in that time frame. There is another reason for my disappointment. If you remember, RDNA 2 was the architecture that caught up to NVIDIA, and RDNA 3 was going to overtake NVIDIA. And that didn't happen. And with the release of the 7600, we can get some insight as to why. To understand how much this new RDNA 3 architecture increased performance, we need to compare similarly configured GPUs. In this chart from AMD, they showed the difference between the 6600 that is based on RDNA 2 with its replacement in the 7600 based on RDNA 3. And the first thing you'll notice is that many of the parameters are very different. First was the number of compute units and shaders. The 6600 has fewer compute units and shaders than the 7600. Second is the GPU clock speeds for both game and boost. And finally is the difference in memory speeds. But they do have some key similarities. They have the same amount of VRAM, they have the same 128-bit bus, and they have the same amount of infinity cache. To do a proper comparison between two architectures, you want the parameters to be the same. To get a better comparison, we can look at the 6600 XT. The 6600 XT has the same number of compute units and the same number of shaders as the 7600. And I know some people are easily confused by the names or labels AMD Marketing gave these cards. Don't think of them with their marketing labels. In fact, we can just remove these marketing labels and replace them with their architecture name. This is just a comparison of RDNA 2 versus RDNA 3. Continuing with the table, the next item is Game Clock. But Game Clock and how it's determined is not well defined, so let's ignore that one. 
Next, we would want to adjust the boost clock speeds of the GPUs to be the same. Likewise for the memory bandwidth. And since both of these GPUs have a 128-bit memory bus, we just need to adjust the memory clock speeds to be the same. One method to make them the same would be to adjust the RDNA3 GPU boost clock and memory clock speeds downward to match the speeds of RDNA2. And while AMD's Adrenaline software will allow you to adjust the 7600 boost clock speeds downward to match RDNA2, it will not allow you to lower the memory clock. The lowest setting is 2250 MHz. To be equal to the RDNA2 based 6600 XT, it would need to move downward to 2000 MHz. The other method would be to adjust the RDNA2 GPU boost and memory clock speeds upward to match the speeds of RDNA3. And this method will work since I can use Adrenaline software to increase both GPU and memory clock speeds to match RDNA3. Let's start by looking at some benchmarks. In this first set of charts, you're gonna see four results. The first three are the stock 6600 XT, the overclock 6600 XT to match the 7600, and the stock 7600. The fourth one is the 7600 that has its GPU boost clock limited. I spent hours and hours of testing, and I found that out of the box, the 7600 would boost up to 2.9 to 3 gigahertz under specific conditions. That was well above the advertised 2.66 gigahertz. So I had to adjust the max GPU boost clock downward so that its boost clock frequency was like the overclock 6600 XT. Again, we want the operating frequencies to be as close as possible so that the only difference is the architecture. So I'm going to call this fourth entry the 7600 UC since it was under its maximum clock that you can experience out of the box. But take note, as you'll see, that doesn't matter as much in most scenarios. Starting with Wildlife Extreme, as we saw in my last video, the stock 6600 XT averages 100 FPS while the stock 7600 averages 110 FPS. Focusing on the 6600 XT overclocked, and it averages 109 FPS. That's one frame behind the 7600. The 7600 UC did not make a difference as it ran at the same clock frequency in this benchmark. So in this test, RDNA3 is 1% faster than RDNA2. In TimeSpy, the GPU score for the stock 6600 XT scored 9500, and overclocked, it went over 10,000. The stock 7600 was at 10,700, and when clock limited, it was almost the same. So RDNA3 is 5.8% faster than RDNA2. And in TimeSpy Extreme GPU, the score showed that RDNA3 was 9% faster than RDNA2. So TimeSpy Extreme is a more demanding benchmark than TimeSpy, and we see the new architecture in RDNA3 in this scenario is even more capable than RDNA2. And in Port Royal, the ray tracing benchmark, RDNA3 is 7.4% faster than RDNA2. Ray tracing did get better, but not that much better, and it did not keep pace with NVIDIA. In the DX11 benchmarks of Firestrike, Firestrike Extreme, and Firestrike Ultra, RDNA3 is only about 1% faster than RDNA2. Next is Shadow of the Benchmarks. This is a great game for benchmarking since it scales well and doesn't have updates, so comparisons from this data will be useful in the future. First, we'll look at the stock 7600 versus the stock 6600 XT. And in this benchmark, I ran it across a range of resolutions from 4K all the way down to 720p. Looking first at the stock 7600 versus the stock 6600 XT, you can see that across all resolutions, the 7600 averages 10% faster, just like we saw in Hardware Unboxed 15 game review. Now, when looking at the comparisons of the RDNA2 and RDNA3 architectures running at the same clock speeds, they are the same at 4K and 1440p and are just two to four FPS different at 1080p and below, giving RDNA3 on average across all resolutions a 1% win over RDNA2. And that result is what we saw in testing a vast majority of games. RDNA3 at the same clock speeds is only ahead of RDNA2 by anywhere from 1 to 3%. They are so close in performance, you couldn't tell these two GPUs apart. But there were a few notable exceptions. In Red Dead 2, using all the settings maxed out, we see RDNA3 10% faster than RDNA2. But when you change the settings to just the default settings, 
We see RDNA 3 across all resolutions average 20% better than RDNA 2. In Cyberpunk, we see RDNA 3 average 10% better across all resolutions. However, in Horizon Zero Dawn, you see RDNA 2 is similar to RDNA 3 at 4K, but then at 1440p, RDNA 2 is 10% faster. At 1080p, RDNA 2 is 20% faster, and at 720p, it is 30% faster. Why does RDNA 2 get faster than RDNA 3 at lower resolutions? RDNA 3 is a different architecture than RDNA 2, and it's difficult to explain the differences. And the best analogy I can think of is, RDNA 3 doesn't feel that much faster, but it'll plow through the heavy stuff much easier. Maybe like a pickup truck versus a car. However, many times, RDNA 3 is just held back by its power limit. By the way, if you like videos like this, like, share, and subscribe. And let me know in the comments below if you are surprised RDNA 3 did not provide a better improvement this generation. So in a vast majority of games, the 1-3% improvement seen is almost nothing. But we have had the evidence available since the day one reviews. You see, with the overclock settings I have on the 6600 XT, it is effectively a 6650. And we have plenty of gaming benchmarks available from the day one reviews to confirm this. Looking at a few sources with a wide variety of gaming benchmarks, first was Tom's Hardware, where in their 15 game average, the 7600 was 4% faster than a 6650. Then, at Tech Power Up, in their 25 game average, the 7600 was just 3.2% faster. Finally, Hardware Box showed the 15 game average where the 7600 was just 3.5% faster. And it's easy to conclude that on average, RDNA 3 architecture is just 3-4% faster. Maybe AMD spent most of their time in RDNA 3 focused on improving ray tracing. Uh, not really. Looking at the results from Tech Power Up, it's just 2% faster. And that's even more disappointing. You would expect AMD's second generation of ray tracing to be closer to NVIDIA's second generation of ray tracing, and the 7600 to be close to the RTX 3060. In terms of generational performance gains, the 7600 is like a refresh of the 6650 XT. Let's recap. The AMD Radeon team spent two years developing this new architecture, and it is a new architecture. But what are the implications of RDNA 3 architecture not being a very good upgrade over RDNA 2? Could this be a major setback for AMD that opens the door for Intel? Will that cause AMD to refocus its efforts with RDNA 4? AMD is set to release new GPUs based on the Navi 32 die soon. Will AMD Radeon be able to recover this generation and compete against Nvidia? We'll cover that next time. Thank you all so very much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.